Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Today we are bringing you guys along for a fun new series that we've been wanting to do for a while. We have a lot of experience, as you guys probably know from the past videos on our channel, about starting a coffee type trailer. Um, we have not actually owned a trailer where you can pull it and move it around, but our first building that we built for our coffee shop was the exact same replica model that you would do for a coffee trailer. And so for that reason, we feel like we have a lot of information that we can bring to you guys about coffee trailers. And if you are in the process of wanting to build one or have always dreamt of building a coffee trailer, even owning a coffee shop, this is a great place to start. So today we're just going to go down a list of all the things that we could think of um, to bring you guys the information that we have as far as starting a coffee trailer. A lot of this stuff is Casey's expertise, um, which is why some of the videos you guys have watched have just been me. It's because my side of the business is more like employees and dealing with that whole side of it and Casey's side of the business is always the building process. So you'll be hearing a lot from this dude right here today just because he is so knowledgeable when it comes to this stuff and we want to bring you guys the best information that we can. Um, as I said, this is going to be a series so be sure and check back for all the rest of the videos. Today we're gonna start out just kind of with like the basis and the pros and cons and all that good stuff. Yeah, so our first building that we had was um, very similar to a coffee trailer. It wasn't on wheels, uh, it didn't have an axle or anything like that, but it was a structure that was a, a 10 foot by 10 foot building that literally sat just on top of the asphalt in a parking lot. So we weren't hooked up to city water or sewer, um, and our power uh, was permanently attached to, a, uh, to, this, to the uh, power pole that we were parked next to, but all of our water every day we had to haul in and haul out. So um, we have a lot of experience with that and uh, it, was, it was not fun. So we uh, just wanna make sure that we can help you guys out with all of the pros and cons because there are a lot of really great positives to having a building that isn't permanent um, and there's also some downfalls to it as well. So, Okay, so without further ado you guys, let's start with the pros and the cons. I would say first the pros uh, are obviously cost and versatility. Um, the cost of having a coffee trailer that you can move around is going to be far cheaper than it is to go either build a building or to rent from someone. Um, usually there's no lease involved with it because it's just a trailer. You can move it around. Uh, if you want to park it in one specific spot, um, most likely there would probably be some sort of a lease and a monthly payment to rent the space in a parking lot from a landlord to do that, but um, where we're located here in Idaho um, and in the town that we're located in, they don't even require food trucks or food trailers to have permits. So you don't have to worry about paying property taxes, you don't have to worry about paying um, rent unless obviously, like I said, if you have a, a deal with a landlord. Um, and they actually allow you here to park them at different parks in our town um, and also on the streets, right on the sidewalk, on a busy road. So. Uh, it's kind of turned into a, a very popular way to, to do things due to the fact that it is much cheaper um, and the versatility to be able to take it wherever you want to different events, whether that be different parades or different sporting events, uh, you can really do almost anything with them. So there's even some like pros and cons even to just like moving your building like that. Like Casey talked about, it's so much cheaper to be able to have a building that isn't necessarily hooked up to some of those services because you don't have to pay the fees. Um, for us, when we hooked up our building to our city water, sewer, and garbage, well, garbage, <laughs> we didn't hook up to that, but still, um, when we hooked up to the sewer and the water, we city had to services. pay city services. Thank you. We had to pay uh, around $14,000 just in impact fees alone. And so that's one of the things that, like Casey said, it's a, a lot more affordable for you if you have a building that you are self-contained, where you take those things with you. Um, and that is definitely a pro. I would say a con to having a building that you're moving all the time um, is that sometimes when you don't have a permanent location, it's hard to build up a clientele. Because especially in coffee, where it's something that's so impulsive and something that becomes a part of everyone's day, like, you know, I wake up and I'm like, Ooh, Ooh, get ready do my hair and then I'm like in my car driving to the coffee shop before I go to work and so um, one of the things about like a con of moving your building all the time like Casey said is that 
you're going to find that it's harder to get people to come to you habitually because if you're moving constantly, they can't find you and you're no longer a convenience to them. You almost become an inconvenience because you're never in the same spot. So that's where, um, how he said that sometimes you can almost like rent a spot from a landlord is an awesome option because that rent is probably a lot cheaper than an actual building or structure. Um, but that way you can be in one consistent spot with the option to take your trailer to things like he said, sporting events, um, soccer games, anything like that. Um, but just be aware that there is like a pro and a con to being able to move. And that is that you might run into a little bit of apprehension from customers where they can't find you. And so you become an inconvenience. Yeah. And kind of following up with that, I think it's important to have a consistent spot where you want to be. So let's say if you're going to be open Monday through Fridays and you're going to be in the exact same spot from 6 a.m. until 5 p.m. every day, but then on the weekends, you're going to take the trailer and you're going to go to different events, whether it be, um, you know, different events, maybe in your local community, your parks, baseball games, football games, or whatever. Um, that way your customers know, okay, they're not open on the weekends or they're not there on the weekends. They're always gone. But during the week when I want my coffee, I have a consistent place I can go to. Cause as you can imagine, you're getting excited about a, a drink or something that you're really looking forward to. And you drive all the way across town and they're not there. So I think it's really important to make sure that you're consistent. And that's why we chose to do a temporary building that we wanted to always stay there um, versus doing the trailer route. However, um, downside to that would be the water tanks that we had to fill and empty. We couldn't just hook up to the trailer, take it somewhere and dump it and fill it and bring it back. We had to physically haul jugs of, of gray water, you know, all of our, from our drains, our sinks and different things like that, our espresso machine. And we had to haul those and actually take them and dump them and then bring them back. So that made it nearly impossible for us to leave town without trying to get help from friends to say, hey, can you help us out with emptying and filling our water tanks and things like that? So, you know, there really is a lot to think about in this. And if it's going to be a part-time thing for you, like maybe this is just supplemental income, you want a coffee trailer to do events on the weekends, that's awesome. That's, you know, that's a great way to do it. Um, but on the flip side, if this is something you're wanting to do more full-time, and you want to create some sort of a, um, a a true business that you want to last for many years and create up a or, and to create a clientele to follow you and a bunch of customers, then you're really going to need to make sure that you have a consistent spot that you stay at. Another pro to having a coffee trailer is it costs far it's it's far cheaper to heat and cool versus a building. You might only be heating, you know, a hundred square feet which is far cheaper and far easier than having your whole, you know, having a whole building where people come in and sit down. So um, your power bill is for sure going to be cheaper as well. Uh, another <clears throat> pro to doing a coffee trailer over a permanent location is that if you decide that you are finished with your business or something comes up and you no longer can do it, a coffee trailer is significantly easier to sell than an actual brick and mortar business. Um, and that's just because your coffee trailer doesn't necessarily have to be used for coffee. As you guys probably know, food trucks are like a big thing right now. Um, and they're amazing. We, we love going to different food trucks yeah. all over the nation. Um, but it makes it nice because if you do go the trailer route, you can always sell your trailer quite easier than you can an actual building um, and selling just like a structure. I would say a major con to having a coffee trailer would be storage. In a coffee shop, you have a lot of cups, syrups, lids, straws, uh, coffee beans. You have all sorts of ingredients, um, not to mention milk and things like that that take up a lot of space. So a coffee trailer is very limited on how much you can actually hold. So what that's going to cause you to do is to have to restock your coffee trailer daily if this is going to be something that you want to do every day. Um, for us, when we first started, our storage facility was our garage. We had a garage, we had um, the big racks on the sides, and we put our syrups and our all of our extra inventory. That way, whenever we needed something, we didn't, you know, we could grab it at home the next day before we came into work. So we made a list every night as to what we needed when we closed. That night we went home, we'd load it up, and then go to bed, wake up. When we went to work, it was already in the car, and we would just unload it. So. Um, that's something that you're really going to have to look at and coffee, believe it or not, the storage takes up a lot of space, um, cups, boxes of cups and lids and things like that. 
they just take up a lot of space and um, you have to get really creative with your coffee trailer. Also, um, the height of the trailer is going to be really important because depending on who you have working in there and what you, kind of shelving and things like that that you need, you need to make sure that your coffee trailer is tall enough. For a guy like me, I'm six foot, so if the trailer's only six feet tall or six foot six, it might not be tall enough. You have to think um, about the employees you're gonna have in there and also your equipment, your refrigerators and things like that that you need to permanently attach inside of your trailer. Make sure that they're secure so when you're driving down the road, they're not bouncing off, you know, bouncing all over the place when you're driving down the road. Um, and so that's also really, really important as to what kind of a trailer are you going to need. Um, another thing that we also looked into, uh, looking into doing a coffee trailer was whether we wanted a single axle or a double axle. What that basically um, turns into is what, how much weight are you going to be hauling? And it might not seem like much with a coffee shop, but it is extremely heavy to haul this equipment. Um, depending on what espresso machine, what refrigerators you decide to go with, your grinders, your supplies, your sinks, you know, it all adds up. And it may not seem like much, but uh, it really does weigh a lot. And then on top of that, you have your water tanks, which, you know, if they're full, for example, like let's say you have a hundred gallon water tank, which would be huge, um, or even better if you had a 50, 50 uh, gallon water tank with a 50 gallon gray tank, if you're hauling around 50 gallons of water at a time, you know, that's 400 pounds right there, roughly, of just water, because a gallon of water is roughly eight pounds, right? So if you take eight gallon or eight pounds times 50 gallons, that's where we come up with that 400 pounds of just water uh, that you're moving around. So, you know, it really, it really adds up and that is then going to in turn possibly cause another issue is how am I going to transport this trailer? Do I have a small SUV that maybe has a four or a six cylinder engine that maybe can't handle that way? Or am I now going to have to get a full size pickup or a full size SUV to haul this around? So these are things you really have to try to think about before pulling the trigger on going on buying a trailer. And what we've also seen too is people taking older camp trailers and converting them into coffee shops, which is which is a really great idea. Um, however, it can it can also cost you a lot more money to do that uh, due to the fact that you may have to do a lot of renovation to it to make sure that that trailer can handle what you need it to do. Yeah, you have to gut them. Completely. Yeah, you basically are gonna have to take someone's camper, completely gut it, and turn it into a coffee shop, which isn't what the trailer was built for. So the way that the axles are spread out on the trailer may, you know, just that alone, it may not be able to handle that much weight. And it's, you know, honestly, it's not built to do that. So you just need to make sure that if you are gonna buy something and repurpose it, like a camp trailer into a coffee trailer, that you understand how much weight you're putting in it and make sure that the trailer can actually handle that because there would be nothing worse than to get it all done, get it all in there, and then drive it down the road and um, it causes a crash or something like that. It should be very bad. So I told you guys, he's the pro at this stuff. There's you know, like so much I don't think about. The height thing, I'm 5'4", so never even considered that you yeah. have to have a trailer that's tall enough for taller employees. Didn't yeah. even think about that. And height, you know, height is important along with the, the size of your doors. You know, a lot of these trailers, these um, cargo trailers that you can buy, they have doors on them that are made just for a person to walk through. They're not made to put refrigerators through or things like that. So that may determine whether or not you get one that's completely enclosed with one man door on the side, whether you get an oversized man door, whether you get the one with the big ramp on the back so you can open it up and easily haul equipment in and out as you need to. Um, where we're located here in Idaho, another downside to it would be freezing. It gets really cold here in the winter time. And just like a camp trailer, your coffee trailer has water, it has water pipes um, that you need to make sure don't freeze and break. And along with that, you also have equipment inside, like an espresso machine, where if your espresso machine has water in it, which it will, and it freezes at night, that's going to cause possibly thousands of dollars worth of damage to your machine and to your equipment. So you need to make sure that you have a way to keep your trailer warm in the winter time if you're gonna continue to stay in business with it. If this is only gonna be a summertime gig on the weekends. During doing the, weddings, doing. Yeah, doing, doing just events. different events. Then, then you'll just need to make sure that you winterize it every year. 
Um, but that, that's been one downside for us because we've highly considered doing this, done a ton of research on what kind of trailer we would want to do, what kind of purposes we'd want to do. We've thought about doing weddings, taking it to uh, different concerts, different local community events and things like that, uh, farmers markets, things like that. But the problem with it is that we don't have a place where we can put it in the winter time when maybe those event events aren't going on. And so we're trying to think then we'd have to winterize it, probably pull the espresso machine out, blow out the lines to make sure they don't freeze up. And it honestly, for us, has almost turned into possibly more work than what it's worth. Um, we also have a lot of employees that we would have to take from our current coffee shops to come work at the, you know, work the events with the trailer. So does that mean that I'm gonna have to drive the trailer and drop it off and get it all set up so then the employee can just walk in and work and then when it's all over I have to go take everything, close it up and take it back to wherever we're gonna store it? Um, or am I gonna have employees doing that? Do my employees know how to drive a, a, a big truck with a trailer, right? That, that could be a huge problem. Do they know how to back up a trailer? These are things that... No, no. <laughs> these are things that no, I don't. If we, a lot of our employees may not have experience with that and also the liability of, hey, you know, we have an event this weekend. We have a wedding that's 20 miles away. We need you to come grab, you know, my pickup, hook up to our coffee trailer because we're going to be out of town for something else and we need you to drive it to the event, hook it up, level it, do everything like that. Um, it gets really, really tricky, um, and so you may be the one that has to do it all the time, which, like I said, everyone's situation is different. For us, we're already operating two full-time brick-and-mortar coffee shops right now, so this would be kind of like a side deal for us. It wouldn't be a permanent um, location or anything like that, but for those of you uh, who are also looking to kind of do that same thing, that is an issue you're going to run into. Uh, probably the biggest issue I ran into uh, with my research in doing this coffee trailer was power. For us, we operate um, what are called three group La Marzocco espresso machines. They take a ton of power. Um, and when I started adding up all the power of the ice maker, the grinders, the espresso machine, the lights, the, refrigerator. the, the refrigerators, the pumps for the water, things like that, the power that was needed for the the breaker box or the breaker panel on the trailer was huge um it, it's as big as many houses for sure um when you start adding it up so it's uh i got down to where i could probably get away with about 150 amp service for what i wanted to do however they do make smaller espresso machines that are only one group espresso machines they operate on 110 versus 220 so um voltage so you you can get away with doing something like that. Just remember that if you're busy and you're pulling shots out of one little espresso machine, number one, you may overwork the espresso machine to where it can't keep up with what you're trying to do. And number two, you may have a lot of customers waiting for a long time because you can only do so much with that one little machine. Um, another thing, kind of going back to the ice machine situation, you don't necessarily have to buy an ice machine for this. Um, however, as many of you know, ice isn't cheap usually. Um, usually it's going to cost you between $1.50 and $2 a bag, depending on where you're at. And um, so if you're going through 20 bags of ice a day, which, you know, it all is just going to depend on how busy you are and what you're doing. Uh, if you're in the dead heat of summer and people are coming in ordering a ton of um, ice drinks and things like Smoothies that. Smoothies and frappes. Yeah, and, and we yeah. fly through ice. I mean, we go through, we go through hundreds and hundreds of pounds of ice a day. So, um, so that's going to play a factor too. So not having an ice maker is going to save you on um, how much power you're going to need for your trailer. It's going to save you on how much power you actually use. It's also going to save you on how much water you use because having an ice maker uses a ton of water. Mm -hmm. And it also, every time it makes a new sheet of ice, it spits out all of the unused water, which is going to have to go down into your gray water tank. So, you know, that, that alone would probably make it to where I just haul ice for... Um, for this type of situation. And like events, yeah. Yeah, and with a refrigerator, you might be able to get away with like one at-home refrigerator. Or a cooler, I mean, if it's just like a short event. Yeah, if it's only a few hours, you could probably get away with like a really nice um, cooler, like she said, a, a higher-end cooler that can keep things colder for longer. Um, another for like milk and... Milk and whipped cream yeah, and little um, stuff like that. half and half and things things that you just need to, to run your coffee shop. Um, Another thing that caused an issue with power was um, heating and cooling. Heating isn't as, as important uh, for us 
because we were looking to operate this trailer most likely in the summer months. Um, and your equipment puts off a lot of heat anyway. Your refrigerators and your espresso machines and things like that, they already put off heat. So um, you can probably get a small space heater and it probably wouldn't uh, be too hard to keep, keep that little space warm. But keeping it cool is a whole other story. Um, it's much easier to heat space than it is to cool space. So what I was looking at having to do on the coffee trailer that we were looking at is one, possibly two air conditioning units up on top. Those are going to be very similar to the air conditioning units that you're going to find on an RV or a camper. Um, they take a lot of power. And so with that comes, where are you going to plug this into? So you have now espresso machines, possibly an ice maker, refrigerators, grinders, air conditioners, heaters, lights, pumps for point your water, system. your point of sale, your iPad and things like that, your cash drawer, your receipt printer, all these things that run off power. Where are you now going to plug this in? Many places that you go will have spots for different food trucks to plug into. The problem is the power that we were looking at putting into a coffee trailer, those places did not support that much power. So that in turn led to we would have to get a generator. The generator that we looked at that would support as much power as we needed was around $15,000. So it's, a, it's really, really a fine line on how much you can or want to do with your trailer. If this is gonna be, like we talked about, a temporary on the weekend deal, you can probably get by with a small little one group espresso machine, no ice maker, you know, maybe one smaller grinder. Your point of sale could be an iPad, runs on minimal power, LED lighting. You know, there are ways to definitely cut your power down. But if this is something that you're wanting to take this trailer and put it in a parking lot five, seven days a week, and you wanna have a regular spot to be at, then you're really going to run into some issues on power, unless you do what we did. We found a spot where we could park our temporary building, leave it there, and we could hook up right to the power line, which was right overhead. So we got kind of lucky, uh, but you just need to keep in mind that it's not always just as easy as, there's a power line, we're gonna hook up to it. Uh, you need to contact the power company and make sure that you're able to put the power um, from there to your building and make sure that that power line can actually handle what you're wanting to do. Okay, so as you guys can see, owning a coffee trailer can be a great option for a lot of people, especially if this is something that you just want to do, like Casey said, on the weekends, seasonally, um, go to events, maybe you're wanting to do it for weddings and do like a catering. It can be a great option. However, it is a very big misconception that by doing a coffee trailer, it will save you money as far as just building the actual trailer. Um, as you can see, just putting together some numbers that Casey had mentioned, um, the trailer itself can sometimes cost around $30,000. Uh, the ones that we looked into were around $30,000. If you have to buy a special generator, that could be an additional $15,000. And if the vehicle that you currently own doesn't support transferring the actual trailer, that could cost you around fifty dollars to $60,000 just to get a vehicle that could do that. Um, however, it could save you money compared to a brick and mortar on the other end for things like taxes, um, property taxes, not necessarily sales tax or anything like that, but property taxes, it can save you money on those impact fees that we talked about, like hooking up to the sewer water, sewer and water, um, other, other ways it could save you money. Uh, like we talked about on your rent, you know, a landlord's True. probably much more likely to say, yeah, you can park your trailer there temporarily off and on and probably won't charge you very much at all, but if you say, I want to put a building there permanently, they're going to charge you a lot more for that. And for us, when we decided to take our first location and go from being self-contained where we had to haul water all the time, mind you, we did that for two years. I do not recommend doing that. It was a lot of work and we were never able to hardly leave town. So, um, but side note, um, but when we decided to make that switch, our nearest city water line, the main water line that the city said that we had to hook into, was over a hundred feet away. And so what we had to do is we're in this large parking lot. We had to trench, we had, number one, we had to cut all the asphalt. We had to dig a three foot trench all the way down to the main water line, hook up to it, run the main water line, rebury it, and then re-asphalt it. Plus then, like, I, like she was saying, our city required what's called impact fees. It's just a fee that they say, if you wanna hook up to our city water line, there's a fee for it. And it was a couple thousand dollars. And if you want to hook up to our city sewer line, that's also a couple thousand dollars. Now the sewer line, we got lucky. The sewer line was actually directly under our building. 
However, it was 14 feet below the ground. So that involved thousands of dollars of excavating just to get down to it, uh, hooking up to it and everything like that. And there's a lot of inspection fees and things like that. Depending on where you live, this price, these prices can vary greatly. But just in excavation, digging trenches, materials and things like that, just that switch alone was over $20,000 for us. So so that's a big way that having a trailer can save you guys money is that yeah. if you don't have to hook up to that kind of stuff, you are saving money. Mm -hmm. um, some other pros and cons we talked about today are just talking about, I mean, the biggest one we talked about, I think, was saving the money. Um, but we also talked about the ease about being able to move the building if you want to go to events. Um, we talked about having it be easier to sell if someday if you want to sell it. I think another one more, one more really big point would be it's a great way to test a market. If there's a spot that you think a coffee shop might do really good in, this might be a good time to, or a good opportunity, to put a trailer there it doesn't cost you very much. You're not tearing up parking lots. Landlords are much more likely to allow you to do this. Um, cities usually are on board with allowing you to do something like that. When it goes to brick and mortar, there's a lot more regulations typically with setbacks and building permits and things like that. But having a food truck or a coffee trailer, um, typically the, they don't have nearly as many restrictions. So if you're thinking, I, you know, that might be a really good spot for one, maybe you put one there for a year, you do what we did, and what, that was the reason for us doing that, doing it that way is we didn't, number one, we didn't have the money to do all the trenching, all the excavating and all of that. And uh, worst case scenario, if we did it for a year or two and it didn't work out, we just took the building and left. We, we you know, it wasn't the end of the world. When you build a permanent building and you're tying into all these things, it costs a lot more money and it's gonna be a lot harder for you to sell. So, you know, that's, that's, what we've also talked about doing too is if we were moving into a new market, let's say we're going to move into a town down the road and there's a spot that we're really looking at, maybe that's something that we look at, well, let's maybe put a coffee trailer there and see see how busy it gets. Maybe after a year, if it's, if it's really busy, then we look into a larger investment to improve it. If it's a total dud and it's not working out, we take the trailer and we go do something else. All right guys, all the luck. Our camera died right as we were wrapping up our video, but luckily we were at the very tail end. All we wanted to say was thank you guys so much for watching our video and also to not forget to check back because this is going to be a series and we'll have plenty more videos for you guys to come. We're going to go through everything you're going to need to know to start your own coffee trailer if that is your dream. One more thing, we have created an Instagram for the Funtrepreneurs, so it's just at the period Funtrepreneurs, same name as our YouTube name. We post pretty much daily on there about tips and tricks and just behind the scenes photos from our journey of starting a coffee shop. So if you'd like to follow along with our Instagram page, I will put the link for you guys below in the description. Again, thanks guys so much for watching and we will be back soon with more videos on how to start your own coffee trailer.